Hi, biochemists. We're going to talk about digestion today. So let me share my screen. We're going to start by talking about um, the use of enzymes uh, in digestion. And uh, especially because we're focusing on proteins in this video, we're going to talk about zymogens, also called proenzymes. We are going to introduce the different classes of enzymes used to break down the four different biomolecules found in our food, uh, proteins, fats, uh, polysaccharides like starch and DNA. And uh, we'll, talk, we'll start by talking about um, the structures, processes, and enzymes that are used to break down proteins from our diet. So here's just a cartoon talking or showing us how uh, digestion really starts. We've got food entering through the mouth, down through the esophagus, and uh, there is some digestion of food that starts in the mouth, right? Um, we've just done a lab where you can digest some sugars uh, using amylase that's found in your mouth. Um, also, the chewing uh, can help start some of that digestion. It's breaking down the food into smaller bites. Uh, the stomach also has some roles in really breaking down the food, the churning of the stomach, as well as the low pH will do that. From the stomach, the food or the breakdown products are shipped into the small intestine where further breakdown occurs. Uh, and ultimately things end up in the colon. Uh, and this is where we can have, um, so in the small intestine and in the colon is where we'll have our cells picking up the nutrients that we need uh, and then also releasing what we don't need or what we're unable to digest as waste products. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of these parts of the body and the enzymes that they provide for digestion. So uh, we mentioned food coming in through the mouse, mouth and the esophagus, the stomach, um, then into the small intestine. And the small intestine itself doesn't really uh, produce or make any um, proteins that help or enzymes that help with digestion. Instead, the small intestine receives enzymes from the pancreas and the gallbladder um, via the liver, or really the liver via the gallbladder. Um, and those uh, enzymes are moved into the small intestine. So as you can see here, the esophagus can contain salivary amylase. Um, your mouth as well can contain that amylase to break down starches. Uh, within your stomach, um, the low pH, uh, the hydrochloric acid in your stomach helps break things down. And additionally, there are proteases that are present in the stomach here to start breaking down proteins. From the liver, uh, we receive bile salts, and these are stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder can release some of those bile salts into the small intestine. And this starts... Um, helping the small intestine uh, break up big globs of fats into smaller bits. The pancreas uh, is the source of so, so many digestive enzymes that are really essential for the breakdown of food in the small intestine. So there's a pancreatic version of amylase, similar to uh, the salivary amylase. Um, there's lipase. Remember, we've said that enzymes typically end with ACE. And then often the first part of the word um, gives an indication as to what this enzyme does. So amylase breaks down amylose. Lipase breaks down lipids. So lipase can help break down fats into fatty acids. Uh, there are going to be proteases or peptidases, specifically, these are called endopeptidases. That is, um, this is a, a protease that can cut in the middle of a protein rather than having to start at one end or the other. So an endopeptidase cuts in the middle. Um, we've also got nucleases that can break down DNA and RNA. Uh, and last but not least, the pancreas does release some bicarbonate that uh, acts as a base to help neutralize the acid coming in from the stomach. So the pancreas dumps all of these things into uh, the small intestine to help with digestion. And then as we get a little bit further along, we'll also talk about the fact that uh, 
things, many things get broken down completely in the small intestine, um, but then there are, thanks to the pancreatic enzymes, but then there are some uh, membrane bound enzymes in the small intestine where things, as things are getting imported into the cells lining the small intestine um, for uptake to help do that final breakdown. Okay. So we're gonna come back to this image of the, the stomach um, or our digestive tract um, a couple of times. So let's orient ourselves. Here's our stomach. Food comes from the esophagus. And then we've got the gallbladder, which is connected to the liver over here and our pancreas sort of tucked behind. And then from the stomach leads into the small intestine. So let's walk through what this is telling us. As food um, or bites of food, chewed food comes into the stomach, proteins together with uh, the stomach acid, HCL, and a peptidase or a protease called pepsin will break the proteins down into smaller chunks. And these are called oligopeptides. So peptides, we know oligo is like a, like a short polymer, right? An oligopeptide. So once we've got these breakdown products, the oligopeptides, uh, they can actually be perceived by cells in the small intestine. And that stimulates the cells to release uh, two hormones. One is cholecystokinin, CCK here, and the other is secretin. So let's first look at cholecystokinin. Remember, cholecystokinin is released by cells of the small intestine uh, when, they, when it senses the presence of oligopeptides. Um, so breakdown products. So cholecystokinin will stimulate the pancreas to release digestive enzymes. And cholecystokinin also stimulates the gallbladder. Um, and you'll recall the gallbladder is what releases some of the um, bile salts to help break down fats. Other products of digestion uh, can trigger different cells inside the small intestine to release secretin. Secretin also uh, acts on the, on the pancreas. Um, helping to stimulate digestive enzyme release, and also especially um, this uh, bicarbonate, which will neutralize the acid from the stomach. Okay. So we're going to spend some time, uh, first we're going to spend some time thinking about what happens to proteins in the stomach. Um, because we have this uh, HCL inside the stomach, the action of the pepsin enzyme is much higher at a low pH. So let's look at this guy over here. Here's our, um, a graph showing us pH and enzyme activity. And in pink here, we've got chemotrypsin. This is a digestive enzyme that's released by the pancreas into the small intestine. Chemotrypsin, you can see, has an optimal functioning pH at around eight um, seven to nine, really. So this is totally regular body pH, totally makes sense. Pepsin has a peak enzyme activity two from one, a pH of one to two. And that's because the amount of acid here in our stomach is really what helps activate pepsin, uh, to, to do its thing, um, to, to be able to break down proteins. So this is a really specialized protein that only does its job inside the stomach, inside the very acidic environment of the stomach. So we've got a couple different examples of proteases, um, which are the digestive enzymes that are gonna break down proteins. Um, these include trypsinogen, chemotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, and proelastase. Um, so what I really should say is that these are the preproteins that are released or the zymogens that are released from the pancreas into the small intestine. Um, you'll note that pepsin isn't on this list because pepsin comes from the stomach itself. It's not, uh, it's not secreted from the pancreas. So the proteases or the zymogens, the pre-proteases that are released from the pancreas are noted here. And each of these proteases um, recognizes a slightly different 
um, sequence of amino acids and will cleave proteins in slightly different ways. But working all together, these four can help break down, um, break down our foods. I did mention though that these are zymogens. And you'll remember that a zymogen is actually not an active protein. So let's talk a little bit about that. Zymogens here um, have a region of the protein, it's often the N-terminal region of the protein um, that, that's present when the enzyme is first made, but it prevents activation. And in fact, here we're calling it the masking sequence. So this small peptide on the N-terminus of the protein is masking the ability of this zymogen to have any enzymatic activity. When the zymogen masking sequence is cleaved off, now the active site of the enzyme is revealed and it can do its job, uh, whatever that job might be. So classic examples of zymogens include uh, the proteases that we just mentioned, where we have um, chemotrypsinogen, that's a zymogen, and then chemotrypsin, which is the active enzyme, for example. We've also got uh, procarboxypeptidase, which is activated to form carboxypeptidase. Uh, trypsinogen, which is activated to form trypsin. And last but not least, we've got proelastase that's activated through the cleavage of this masking sequence to form elastase. So uh, I want you to think about why the protein breakdown enzymes might be released in an inactive state. That is, why would the pancreas be storing inactive proteases? Well, if you think about it for a second, um, everything inside your body is made up of, protease, of proteins, not everything. Much of your body, much of your cells is made up of proteins. Uh, and if the pancreas were to have just uh, active proteases floating around all over the place, you can imagine that proteins we haven't ingested in our food could start to get digested. So these zymogens exist really as a protective mechanism, protecting our cells from the activity of the enzyme only until these uh, zymogens are activated. That won't happen until they get into the small intestine. So let's talk a little bit more about the activation of zymogens in our body. Um, and we're gonna use trypsinogen uh, being converted to trypsin as the example. These images came from Enrique de Madaria on Twitter, and he has some great images. He's a big fan of uh, digestive proteins. So you can see a, a cartoon of trypsinogen protein over here, and it's got this N-terminal end of the protein, this masking sequence. So enterokinase, which is found inside the duodenum, is important for cleaving off this masking sequence. Once this cleavage has occurred, um, here we're calling it the trypsinogen activation peptide. Once that's been removed from the protein, now we end up having um, a slight rearrangement of the protein so that trypsin can take its final active form and the active side of the protein is open and available for business. Okay. So we, we require this enterokinase protein um, to start the activation of trypsinogen into trypsin. But fun story, or I'm going to say and fun story, once trypsin is active, it's actually trypsin that goes on to cleave and activate the other pancreatic zymogens, such as chemotrypsinogen into chemotrypsin, uh, procarboxypeptidase, into carboxypeptidase and proelastase into elastase. But importantly, trypsin, active trypsin can actually uh, cleave and activate other trypsinogen molecules into trypsin. 
So enterokinase is used to sort of start the cycle. And then once there's a little bit of trypsin activated, it can uh, activate, cleave and activate all of the other zymogens uh, for protein breakdown. So that's kind of fun. All right, so that's all I wanted to tell you about um, protein digestion. Uh, join me in another video to talk about the uh, digestion of polysaccharides uh, and other carbohydrates, fats, and nucleic acids. All right, see you soon.